Hello everybody. Our next camera is one that I have shot with before in the 52 cameras project. So this is more about using it rather than the history. The first part is kind of pre-flight, uh, particularly if you've never used it before and you've got an old camera with a bellows and I haven't always done this, particularly on Polaroids where I could least afford to waste the film. One thing you want to do Extend your bellows. Go in a dark room. It doesn't have to be perfectly dark like when you're dealing with film. And get yourself a little flashlight. And shine it inside. Make sure you get it pretty close, particularly to the corners of the bellows where they tend to wear out. And you'll be doing this in a dark room. So if there's light leaks, you'll be able to see little bitty points of light, particularly at the corners of the bellows. If your bellows checks out, then you're going to want to do a couple more things just to kind of give it a quick once over before you take it out. Set your aperture to its widest on this camera. It's f4.5. And then set your shutter to bulb. And then cock it. Open up the back. And this one doesn't have time. I don't have a cable release on it. So you'll have to hold the shutter if you're in that situation. Open it up to where you're seeing the whole lens with the shutter wide open. And just hold it up to a bright light. Check it out. This one's got a little bit of dust. I gave it a good cleaning when I was running through the steps. Doesn't look like there's any fungus in this guy. Kind of tendrily looking things usually coming in from the edges. But when I shot with this guy before, I had cleaned the outer element. And... I gave the inner element a quick spiffing up before this. It's much easier to get to if you uh, fold the bellows. So I'm going to get this guy in there. And that way this rear element is much easier to get to than when it's way down with the bellows extended. And for that, give it a good dusting first, because if there's a gritty piece of dust and you're wiping, you could scratch it. So. I usually don't use the blower part of these, they're not very good, but the brush is nice and soft. It's made for a camera lens. And then, if it needs it, give it a cleaning with a proper lens tissue and use real lens cleaning fluid made for camera lenses. Because unless you're 100% sure that it's an uncoated lens, you don't want to use window cleaner and you don't want to use even cleaner made for eyeglasses. The coating on camera lenses is different. So use the good stuff. Don't ruin your lens. So we've got the lens and the bellows quickly covered. And then one thing, and you might want to leave it open for part of this at least. Um, and this is a little clunky. It's kind of a three-handed operation. So let me cock it again. So there we're in bulb and we've got the aperture all the way open. So just run through your aperture settings while you're holding the lens open and make sure that your aperture is working properly. While you're doing that, um, if any speeds are going to mess up on an old shutter, well the self timer is number one. Unless you really need it, don't touch it. I've had so many shutters jam up because the self timer uh, was too old, too dirty, the springs were too weak. Um, they're a problem, or they can be. Um, but, you know, some of the slower speeds you'll probably want to test depending on what you're going to be doing. Now that's going to be a pretty slow speed, so you should still hear some a little bit of clockwork. No, that was pretty fast. So let's see, let's check one of our, ah, it was hit head and finished closing. So I gotta watch out for my slow speeds on this guy. So let's try something kind of more realistic. So this is five, a five hundredth of a second. And, seems pretty quick. You know, you don't need to do a rigorous testing of it, just as long as you are you know, seeing a bit of a difference and that it's opening and closing all the way in here. That wasn't bad. That was about a second, I think. 
So I'll just have to watch out for that or stick to the higher speeds. So the aperture is working smoothly. The lens is clean. The bellows is light tight. Within tolerances, it's almost 60 years old. So, and I, I have not been into this uh, to check it out. So this is as I got it. And I did get some decent shots uh, when I used it as part of the 52 cameras project. So that's it for a quick pre-flight. Let's get some film loaded. On this guy, you just lift up on this latch. And obviously this is the take-up side. And one thing that's really nice about this, it's got this springy metal on the feed side and the take-up side. So loading film is a piece of cake. And I've got some T-Max 100. It's used by February of 2021, but I've had it in the freezer. Check it out last night, I think. So it should be nice and room temperature by now. If you load it when it's cold, a couple things happen. It can get water condensed on it. And also, it's a little more brittle when it's really, really cold. So just get it on the top spool. Use a little springy thing. There we go. Got my take up spool. There we go. Now it's ready. And loading this guy is nice and easy. Just bring it across. Put the fold of the paper into the take up spool. Make sure it's grabbed it. Nice and flat across the film plane. And this guy has nice overlap between the back and the body. So uh, there weren't any foam or felt, really felt given the vintage of this, light seals to worry about. It's nice and light tight. One thing that's cool about this, it has a cover so that you're not getting light struck through your ruby window or yellow window in this case. So we'll just go ahead and advance this. And this camera is 6x6, six six, so we should get 12 shots out of this roll. 6x6 six six centimeters. Okay, there's the arrow. There's Kodak. And there's a 1. So then, I don't know if you can see it. You see the 1. So this guy is loaded and ready to go. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do this. I guess I'll schlep my little camera and a tripod while we're out and about taking pictures. A couple of quick notes before I head out to shoot with it. This is about a day later than the previous portion of the video. So the weather's been really freaky. Um, anyway, I did some tests and the shutter is sticking at speeds below a 50th of a second. I think uh, it's just from having sat, so I need to use it more anyway and get it loosened up. It's pretty easy to get off if I do need to tear into it and clean it out. Um, so it's nice and sunny today, so that should not be a problem. And the other thing is, I mentioned in the uh, previous video on about this camera, that this is the uh, 3 8 inch, 16 threads per inch uh, tripod socket. So I did get a packet of the adapters. They just screw in and then give you the smaller uh, quarter inch, 20 threads per inch. Okay, so next up is metering. It's a bright sunny day. So you can, I don't know if you can see that, but you got nice crisp lines to the shadows. So that's what qualifies as a sunny day for sunny 16. So at f16, your shutter speed will be one of your film speed. So this would be one one hundredth at f16. And then you can adjust up or down from there. Or I'm using the Luxie. It's a light meter app on my phone. Or there's this nifty paper calculator, which I haven't used in a while, but it really works well. And it gives you a little better fine tuning than just using Sunny 16. Or if you get 
a DSLR, set it to the same ISO, use that as your meter. There's a million ways to get the right exposure. Finally got back to doing the last segment of this video. So now that we have a meter reading or sunny 16 settings or some kind of a swag as to exposure, what's next? Focusing. Um, I still suck at zone focusings. This uh, 80 millimeter lens on 6x6 six six, uh, 120, it's about normal. Um, so 50 millimeter ish on 35 millimeter. Um, I can't get depth of field from using a wider lens because it's fixed. So I either need to be farther away or stop down to a smaller aperture to get more depth of field. There's no, there are no depth of uh, field marks on this lens like you get on some rangefinders and SLRs, which can be pretty handy when you're doing zone focusing. Um, so for this guy, it's a good idea to either uh, print a table, and there's some good online resources. I'll link them down in the description for either individual settings for at this f-stop with this lens and this film format focused at this distance what's going to be your nearest distance that's reasonably in focus and what's your farthest distance so I've got several down there some are better for tables but maybe you don't have an intermediate stop like at 4.5 some of them are really pre precise so so if you want to do a table or you want to pick a setting, like if you're doing street photography, it's kind of a snapshot setting. A lot of older uh, zone focus cameras, I think my Kodak Pony is like that. It's got little colored marks. Just set it here and it's a snapshot camera. Don't worry about it. Reasonably good light. You'll get a reasonably good photo. So this guy at f8 and focused at 10 feet. Um, this camera will have about 5 feet in depth. Uh, in focus from 8 to about 13 feet and if you stop further down to 16 then you get about 12 feet in focus from about 7 to 19 feet that's pretty good for doing street photography or you know snapshots of cats or kids or whatever so the shutter that I got on this guy there were two or three available um, it has no flash so in low light, you're going to have to do open flash, where you set it to bulb, hold it open, and then pop the flash. Um, that's only going to work in really, really dark circumstances, although I've gotten some cool effects playing with it. Or you're going to want to open the lens up, uh, in this case, all the way opened up is f4.5. But using the same uh, calculators, at f4.5, F, F focus to 10 feet, you're going to get a 2 foot depth of focus. So you're going to want to use a tape measure or something and actually measure from your film plane to the object you're photographing. You don't get much leeway. And if you have a really good eye and you're good at uh, guesstimating distances, more power to you. I'm not good at it. Sorry it's been so long to finish this up. The weather has been nuts. Um, we either had storms or blistering heat, and it's been crazy windy, whichever one of those is going on. And the same is true today. That's why I'm filming inside. And it's kind of pretty outside. It's hot and windy. Um, one delay reason was a really good one. One of the wild cats in our neighborhood had kittens, and then sadly she disappeared. His siblings went to the animal shelter, but we fell in love with him, and it was a stormy day, so his name is Storm. So, you know how I am. He'll be showing up in a lot of videos soon, or at least photos. Lastly, I just want to give a shout out uh, to a lot of photographers who do videos. Um, I was going to try and do most of this out in the field as I was using it. And aside from the wind, which you could tell in the uh, segment on getting a metering, which didn't work because of the wind, lugging around the gear that you're going to use to photograph, plus another tripod, plus another camera, plus trying to get set up, 
try and keep the wind from screwing up the sound. It is a real pain. So uh, I've got mad respect for photographers who do videos and cart around two sets of gear. Um, I'm on to more cameras now, so I will see you then.